About a year ago, Toyota shocked the industry when they brought back a nameplate that we hadn't seen in America for over 50 years, the Toyota Crown Sedan. This is a replacement for the Avalon, and it's a peculiar sedan because it's an all-wheel drive lifted sedan that kind of reminds me of the old Subaru Outback here in America. Now, of course, the company is obsessed with electrifying their entire lineup, and Americans are obsessed with crossovers, which is why we're out here at Calamingo's Ranch to take a look at this. This right here is the brand new 2025 Crown Signia, essentially a SUV. SUV version of that Crown sedan. It combines a hybrid electric powertrain with standard all-wheel drive and just the beautiful looks of a long body SUV slash station wagon. So now that we're finally seeing the new Crown Signia in person, let's go ahead and take a first look. Now before we start talking about the exterior styling of this new Crown Signia, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing because as you guys know, Toyota is on a mission to add more hybrids to their lineup and this represents, I believe, the 19th model for 2025. And what you're gonna find here is essentially a variation of the company's latest hybrid Synergy drive system. It combines a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that runs on the Atkinson cycle. It's paired up with three electric motors to deliver a combined output of 243 horsepower. Now if you're keeping score, the Venza, which is actually going to be um, discontinued after 2024, this is a replacement for the Venza, had 219 horsepower, so this actually has more power. And Toyota says it all goes out through an eCVT with the company's electronic all-wheel drive going to be standard. That's kind of similar to the Crown sedan, which has all-wheel drive as standard. The Crown Signia also has the same setup. Toyota says this combination is good for 36 MPG combined, and the company is also saying this model here will tow a maximum of 2,700 pounds. Now, compared to the old Venza, which technically wasn't recommended to recommended to tow. That is a huge upgrade for those of you who want a premium electrified midsize SUV that can also tow. We don't have any performance figures just yet, but if you're also curious, the hybrid max powertrain, which had a turbocharged engine with a powerful electric motor, two of them, is not available on the Crown Signia. Toyota said for now they're going to focus on this powertrain, and because of the added power, they're confident this should be enough for most people. And remember, this model here is going to get 36 MPG. I assumed if they put the hybrid max powertrain in this, it would probably drop the MPG by 10, and I suspect Toyota customers are probably preferring more of that higher fuel economy figure. But let's go ahead and talk about the uh, exterior styling here. Let me go ahead and close the hood. This is a very early prototype model. But the styling of this vehicle certainly surprised me because where the Crown sedan has a peculiar, kind of strange look to it, the Crown Signia looks very unified. It has a almost front fascia that reminds me of the new Toyota Prius. Toyota is going with this kind of interesting C-shape for its LED daytime running light. A lot of manufacturers are going with the divorced headlight module. As you can see, the Crown Signia does the same thing with this LED low and high beam down here. It looks like no fog lights anywhere on the, around the vehicle, but because it's a hybrid, you can see it has kind of like a smaller grill opening where it has this kind of cool design where it has this geometric pattern with some of them are solid, some of them have a pass-through for the grill. There's a little mail slot here that allows for air to pass through because remember, this is still a gas engine, it's a hybrid, so you'll need that additional cooling but in this storm cloud exterior color with the piano black accents, it's a really attractive looking vehicle. So let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the design of the Crown Signia. As you can see, moving around the side profile, this is built on the same architecture as the Crown Sedan, which means it's a lot bigger than the Venza. The old Venza, or the Venza in general, it was kind of strange because it was basically almost the same size as a Toyota RAV4 on the outside, but it was actually smaller on the inside. This new Crown Signia is significantly larger. It has the same 112 inch long wheelbase as the sedan, and Toyota says that this is seven inches longer than the Venza. The Venza was around 186 inches long, so seven inches more would put this over 192 inches, which again is a good size for a two row premium midsize SUV. Now Toyota is going to offer this in XLE and limited trims, so just two trim levels. This one here that I'm showing you is the limited trim, which means you have this really beautiful 21 inch kind of graphite gray finish wheel running on a 235 by 45 R uh, 21 inch tire. The XLE trim will actually have a 19 inch wheel, which is two inches smaller. So personally for me, I like the size of this. I think it goes well with the body lines. You can see the wheel arch moldings here are piano black painted. And you can see the rest of the lines, the flowing lines of this vehicle just remind me of a long roofed wagon. And that's what I love about the Crown Signia is Toyota could have just made it look like a boring traditional SUV, but instead it just looks like a sleek wagon. You can see it's got these uh, integrated aerodynamic roof rails. Uh, there's a panoramic glass roof above here, although it doesn't have the star gaze design where it has the frost and defrost like in the Venza. It's just a single piece 
uh, of a glass roof panel. And then you can see here the windows aren't tinted back here. Now I'm not entirely sure if that's going to be for a production model, but it's my suspect or suspicion is because the EPA classifies this more as like a car. Toyota didn't say the ground clearance, but it should be similar to the sedan crown, which has just under six inches of ground clearance. You can see there's some chrome along the window trim here. And then if you follow me over to the rear, um, you can see the design of this car it looks a lot like the Crown Estate. Again, this is essentially the same car, which is called the Crown Estate in other markets. But here in America, Toyota went with the Crown Signia, which is supposed to be a variation of Insignia. But Toyota essentially says it's a Crown SUV. Now looking at the rear, you can see you have that full length LED light bar for the taillights, which are looks like a full LED. You have Crown spelled out the back. There's that Beyond Zero badge where it says HEV for hybrid electric vehicle with all wheel drive. Toyota has not, or is not ready to talk about a plug-in hybrid model or a hybrid max. It's only gonna have just that hybrid electric powertrain. There's a limited badge here. And then down here in the lower bumper, you can see your reverse lights are down here. No visible exhaust tips. A lot of electrified cars are kind of getting rid of that. And then in terms of the cargo area, you can see it has a power lift gate. And while Toyota wasn't ready to talk about cargo figures just yet, the old Venza had less cargo than the RAV4, which was supposed to be the smaller vehicle on the outside. You can see this crown definitely has a lot more space. Toyota actually said that if you fold down the seats, which you can do by pulling this little lever back here, they actually said this, again, is long enough to accommodate items over six feet long. So again, this is definitely where a lot of consumers are going to be looking for. They want a mid-size two-row premium SUV to have that additional space. Underneath here, you can see there's also, it looks like a little bit of underfloor storage, but I'm not entirely sure if it has a spare. It looks like there's room for a jack. So this is, again, a very early pre-production model. But again, if you guys had a Venza or were looking at a Venza, but you were disappointed in the lack of interior space, this Crown Signia is definitely going to solve that. So now let's go ahead and move on to the interior of this Crown Signia. As you can see, the color combination of that storm cloud with the saddle brown tan interior is a great color combination. This is technically a soft text as I get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk. And let me briefly talk about the seats again. This is a soft text material, so it's a faux leather. The seats have this really beautiful kind of contrasting stitching and piping. You have perforation here because they are heated and ventilated. The passenger seat here is a six-way power adjustment. The driver's seat here is a 10-way power with a two-way lumbar, and it also has a two-person memory function. So the seats themselves, they feel really plush. They feel really comfortable. I love the way they look. They are perfectly tailored for the type of audience that's gonna want this vehicle for comfort. Now, looking at the rest of this cabin, let me show you guys the door panel here. It has a soft touch injection molded plastic where it has the soft hex brown leather kind of going through this portion of the door panel. It's also padded down here. There's some kind of bronze accents that you saw from the Crown sedan. The windows are one touch for all four up and down, which is great. The steering wheel is, looks like it was taken directly from the Crown sedan and includes paddles on the wheel. And you have a manual power or manual tilt and telescoping wheel. There's a ton of adjustments. And then you can see here in terms of the dashboard. The dashboard looks identical to the sedan. So you have a hard touch area here over the instrument panel hood. This is soft touch over here. Uh, there's more of that bronze accent here. It's nice and leather covered here. This is the same soft text on this portion here. Down here, it's hard touch plastic. But overall, it doesn't feel uber luxurious, but it's a nice design. It flows really nicely, of course, the way the dash vents are integrated, the way the infotainment screens look. All of the Crown insignias will come standard with the latest version of the Toyota Audio Multimedia Interface, which includes a 12.3 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto over the air updates. And you also have a fully digital 12.3 inch display here for the instrument panel. So again, these are all features that the Venza offered, but I think the design of this, again, while it doesn't feel always the most luxurious, it is very functional. The build quality for a pre-production car also looks great. And I also love the fact that Toyota has preserved physical buttons here. So you have dual zone climate control, you have heated and cooled seat buttons here, heated steering wheel controls, uh, the knobs and buttons also feel really high quality. Down here, you can see you have your wireless phone charging pad. You have this little joystick controller here for the eCVT, which is similar to the, the Prius, of course. You have two USB charging ports here, cup holders here. You have some piano black accents, and then your drive mode selector is here. The Crown offers several different modes from an eco, a normal, a sport, a custom mode. There's also an EV mode as well, where you can drive on full electric for very, very short distances at very light throttle applications. And then over here, you can see there's a nice padded center console armrest area where it opens up on one side here, and it also opens up on the passenger side here. So that's a really nice touch. There's another USB charging port in there, and there's some good storage as well. The glove compartment, as you can see, is a bin style. Uh, or I'm sorry, it goes into the dash uh, and it has a lid that is not, or is damped but not lined with felt. 
Uh, it's a pretty decent size. There's a JBL premium sound system in here for you audiophiles. And then above me here, you can see it's got that panoramic glass roof where on the outside, it looks like one piece, but on the inside here, there's a bar, unfortunately, that uh, takes up a little bit of view. This has a shade that opens and closes. It does not frost or defrost like in the Venza. I do wish that it opened to vent up air or vent out air, but it is nice that you still have that full glass roof panel. But overall, you can see uh, if you guys like the Crown Sedan, this is gonna feel pretty identical. It feels roomy, it feels spacious. It is lacking a heads-up display. I am surprised to see it's missing a heads-up display, but other than that, it has most of the features you want, including a nice digital camera rear view mirror when you have the vehicle packed up to the roof with stuff. But let me go ahead and hop into the back seat area. Now, we don't have final figures just yet for the space, but the Venza, the vehicle that this is replacing, had basically the same, if not less, legroom than a RAV4. As you can see, for the Crown, Toyota has totally solved that. Now, I believe the Crown sedan has around 39 inches of legroom, so I would expect this to have the same because it has the same wheelbase. This is definitely more space than a RAV4. You can see for somebody that's five foot seven, there's plenty of legroom here. There is a hump that intrudes on the middle passenger, uh, but for somebody my height, I can get back here and stretch my legs out. I can cross my legs pretty easily. There's also decent headroom here, which is nice. Although if you're over six feet, you might have your hair touching the ceiling. In terms of the materials here, this is a slightly padded soft touch material here. More of the leather, although I wish this was the brown soft text as opposed to the black. It just would look better uh, with the contrast. You can see padded area here. You do have one level heated rear seat where it's just on or off. The window controls feel pretty high quality. And then if you look over here, the seat does obviously fold down. And when you fold it down, it gives you almost a completely flat floor. This actually folds out if you want to kind of, again, extend the flat floor area, if you wanna have longer items come out back here. Uh, this seat does not, it looks like, have the ability to recline. It doesn't recline, it just folds down. Uh, but again, you do have an armrest here that folds down as well and gives you two cup holders. So overall, if you wanna use this as a family vehicle, you're looking for an upgrade from a RAV4 hybrid, the Crown Signia is certainly going to feel like that with all the additional space that you get in the back seat. So while the Toyota Crown sedan was a very peculiar model for the U.S. market, the Crown Signia makes total sense as a replacement for the Toyota Venza, which to me, I always really liked the Venza, but I also thought it was strange that it was a lot smaller. This now has the dimensions that Americans are looking for. It's got the extra length. It's got the extra rear seat space. It's got the extra cargo capacity. And it also has that standard hybrid powertrain with standard all-wheel drive. It's really going to appeal to a lot of people. So I think the Toyota has done a really great job by introducing the Crown Signia to America. Now, if you guys are looking to get your hands on this model they will be heading to dealers toyota says in the summer of 2024 so you're gonna have to wait a pretty long time to get one but i think it'll be worth the wait because this model here has everything that customers were looking for with the additional towing capacity and the efficiency. Now, in terms of pricing, I can't really comment on that yet. Toyota wasn't ready to talk about that, but just know the Crown Sedan starts at around $40,000. The Toyota Venza starts at around $35,000. So I expect this car to start more in the $40,000 range where the Crown Sedan starts. I expect this to be perhaps a little bit more expensive. We have no idea how much this fully loaded limited will cost. I'm gonna guess maybe around $50,000. That's just my guess. But overall, I think for those of you who want something a little bit nicer than a RAV4, but you aren't quite ready to make the full leap into a, like a Lexus RX, this Crown Signia is going to be a really interesting choice when it goes on sale in the summer of next year. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2024 or 2025, I'm sorry, Toyota Crown Signia. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.